All right, welcome to the Hidden Monkey Friday uh, daily update, October 10th. All right, so cool day in the market. Why do I say cool day? I'm going to zoom in real quick and show you. Here is the SPY, right? And take a look. IB rank popped to 92.5427. Um, by the way, let me know if you guys can see this better because I tried to change my settings on this side so it fits into the screen larger. So if this doesn't work, let me know. Anyway, all right. And the SPY closed. Oh, lordy. It closed at 190.54, which is basically below this Fibonacci retracement line. Okay, check it out. Look at the high. Okay, 201. So 191 would 191.9 would be a hundred point drop in the a hundred point drop in the ES, which is the SPX, or a ten, which is a ten point drop here. So 201.9 minus 10 should be like what 191.9, and it closed below that. Okay, 191. It closed at 190, right? And IB rank popped to 92.54. What is IB rank? That's this chart right here for anyone that's new to the forum. Okay, so why am I excited and why am I not all bent out of shape? Because remember now, I have a position betting that the SPY will stay above 190. Okay, I have, I have one position there. So why am I? I'm more excited than stressed out. And here's why. When was the last time any of you saw this? Okay, I'll tell you when. And like I said, if you haven't put on any trades, now you can really freaking load up. Why? If you've been putting on trades since 50, yeah, I can feel your pain because IB rank has been already oh, collapsed here, but then it climbed up again. So if you put on trades when IB and I, and then volatility rises, RB rank rises, it's going to hurt your P&L position. But this is why Karen doesn't really look at her daily P&L position, her profit and loss position. Why? She only looks at her position, meaning she knows she put it on at a certain probability of success. And she has faith in that probability of success. And she moves it if it, if her probability of profit drops, gets to 70% or lower. All right? Well, she can do that because she has so much money she can collect. She can go really far out and risk a lot of money to make a little bit. And that's why she'll move it out and she'll move away before she, it gets really, really tested. So let me show you. I'll go over that in a minute. Okay, but look. IV rank is highlighted. It's, all, it's lit up, right? Remember this number, 92.5427. I'm going to zoom out. When was the last time it was this high? Look, I'll draw the line right here. Right around here. Okay. The last time it hit this high was, look, all the way back here. Get inward on February 3rd. Right? So let's look, just so you guys have some context. Here we go. February 3rd, right here, down here. See February 2, 3? Right here, that day, IB rank sky. Oh wait, I gotta move it over because that. Here we go. IB rank skyrocketed to ninety-seven point four zero around. Now, what's, here's what's interesting. Okay, here's why I, I'm excited. Look at what it dropped down to. I mean, um, if I scroll this way, I'm trying to look for something. Look, one eighty-four point nine. A 10 point drop would be 174.9. Okay. And it dropped down. The lowest it got was right around here. This all the way down here. See? About an 11 point drop. Okay. Look at what happened then. IV rank was, like I said, IV rank. This, whoa, 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 whoa. Here. IV rank was at 90 something. And look how long it stayed there one day. See, the very next day it dropped. Leveled off and dropped again. SCPY has not stayed up this high for very long. I'm not saying it can't stay up longer, but I'm just saying IB rank is the only thing that's mean reverting, like Jacob, you know, the resident smart guy in T-shirt trade says. All right, check, check out your on balance volume cross. Okay, down here, about uh, less than a million. This is in millions, right? So less than a million uh, shares uh, were traded on that day. Um, I shouldn't say that's that's not actually accurate, but that's um, buyers versus sellers. And here's your slow stochastic. Okay, it's below twenty. It's below twenty. It's, it's, it was at wait, it got to about what fifteen point four seven seven. Okay, so it's below twenty, considering it's oversold. 
supposedly, right? And it stayed below that for how many days? I don't know, one, two, three, four, five, about a week. And it started to climb up, all right? So let's see, for, from the lowest point, it only stayed there three to two days, and then it started to rise up. Why am I showing you that? Okay, and let's look at ADX. I added that ADX study just so I could show you. When this trend line gets above 25, right, right here, indicates a strong trend, whichever way it's going. So as you can see here, it crossed above 25, which indicated that downward move is stronger. And sure enough, the very next day, bam, had a wicked down move all the way down to here, right? And then it still had a down move, still had a down move, then it turned around. Now I'm going to fast forward to today. Right around. Okay, look. 201.9 is the high, so minus 10 would be what? 191.9, so 190.9 would be 11 point drop. 190.5, we already hit that 11 point drop, the same drop as the last time. Percentage wise, not quite yet though, right? Because, you know, percentage wise are different. So that's why I'm kind of really, what I'm going to do is I'm really going to watch the ES for Sunday. The ES forward slash ES ticker symbol is the. Um, SPX mini futures for Sunday. I want to see how that trades on Sunday before Monday. So anyway, 92.54 IV rank, right? That's pretty high. Um, here's OBB cross, right? And here is it just broke 25 on the ADX. So this could trend down more. All right. So why I'm not worried out because I got time. Okay. I have about 20 more days before this thing is my 190 position expires. Could it have an uptick or a couple upticks before then? Sure. I'm still on the dance floor. That's what Tom means by uh, duration over direction. Now, if I wanted to move it, or if you want to move your position, here's what you could do. Let me go to Dole. Let me go to SPX. Whoops, wrong one. And here's that position I was talking to you about. Oh, no, right here. I sold the 190, okay, and I bought the 172.5 as the wing, meaning um, to limit my losses okay, and to preserve capital. So what you do is you're going to click on these, and let's look at my options. Okay, and I'll also talk to you about Karen does. Karen, Karen would never let her got to this. She would have already rolled out to way below. She likes to keep it about 80 minimum. She likes to do is 80% probability of success or probably out the money. So look at mine right now. I'll click on this leg right here, 51%. When this number hits 70%, she moves it already. She moves it further this way if it's a put to where this number shows 80%, all right? So she would close this position or roll it. Rolling just means you're closing one position and opening up another one in the same trade. So you're just buying back and then reselling again um, in the same trade. Are you still closing a position? Yeah, is it for a loss? Yeah, but you're selling another one at the same time. Um, and if you can collect more than zero, Okay, and it and that position expires out of the money. That's how much you make, and so you don't lose any money. You're just kind of pushing it out further, but you have to collect for a credit. You can't do it for a debit. So if you look, what happened was when I hit roll, it's showing me the November seventh, two thousand fourteen weekly expiration. Um, I don't want that. I want to go to the normal expiration. So you're gonna go here. You're gonna click this until this W goes away. See that W went away, and so now, okay. This October one right here is that's my current position, the one I'm going to close. The one highlighted or grayed out is what I'm going to move it to. Okay, so that instead of 21 days, I'm going to push it out for to 42 days till it expires. Now, when I do that, look, I can collect 28 cents for a credit, but my probability of finishing out the money is still 50%. Karen wouldn't go for that. Um, she she likes to use the math on her side, so she would move it, meaning move the strike price, which is this 190 put and she'd move it down for this to be at least 80 percent okay the problem with if I do that watch if I do that I'm hardly gonna be in fact I'm gonna lose 79 percent I have to pay see DB debit means I'm paying I don't want to pay right because then I'm losing money what can I do to maybe increase this credit well to make this more towards zero or a positive number I can move this to further out, but it doesn't do much. See, it's I'm buying a oh, uh, 50 cents. I can, if I scroll this sucker all the way out here, watch this. I'll zoom in out real quick. I can reduce it, and it'll be more like a naked, a real naked position. Okay, like here. See, 
I'm buying it. So whenever you buy, you got to buy the ask price. Whenever you sell something, you're collecting the bid price. So I have to pay 33 cents for this. I'm not liking that, right? Here we go. I can move it all the way out here and pay only 10 cents. Okay, now I got my debit down to a dollar seven, but I'm still losing a dollar seven on this roll. So remember this number. Get a piece of paper and write down whatever a dollar seven. Okay. Um, what you got to do is you got to, and so what Karen would do is she would hit review and send, and she would send this order in and place this trade, right? Okay. But she has to collect a, a dollar seven more. So then what she would do is she would. After she plays this trade, she'll she'll sell more calls on this side to make up the difference. So clear this. I'll go to choose strategy, go to vertical, and let's let's show you a call right here. A call, and then we remember now we need the November expiration, right? Perfect. Because remember, I'm short like a dollar seven cents, right? Now let me zoom in. So to make up for that dollar seven cents, I need to collect a dollar seven cents. So what can I do? Well, let's just move this out here. So it's like a golden gecko. We want this about 2% at least. Okay. So I have to pay 16 cents for that. Right. And then look. And then I can move this in to let's say she likes to be at about 80, right? Okay. 80%. But now she's like, but, but then you're, Mark, you're only collecting 42 cents. You need to collect a dollar. Exactly. So what does she do? Well, she doesn't want to risk any more risk her chances of being wrong. She doesn't want to go below 80%. So she does not want to do this to collect more money, right? So what she'll do is she'll do this, something like 80%, but she'll sell three of them. Because if she sells three of them, she'll collect what? Dollar twenty, right? Which more than makes up for her loss on the other side. Okay? That's so that's what you could do. Right now, in my case, I don't think I'm going to do that. Um, I'm just I wanted to show you how you could do it. That's one way. That's that's how she does it. Um, but because I'm a, but that does take up more capital, right? I mean, look, okay. So what I'm going to do is I think I'm going to go back to my position and I want to see what would happen if I roll. Okay, duration over direction. So if I roll this position two and I'm gonna make move this to so down here so it's November without the W. So click here. There we go. I can collect 28 cents for or credit, right? And um I have a chance to be right. So I might do that as well. And I might do a I might do a call as well. Okay, so if I if I put this on, on Monday, right, I can get out of that 190 position, buy myself time. And to make up for like, I don't know, to make to make up for this, I'll sell more calls. Probably around the 195, the 195 calls to make up the difference. All right, because I, I want to stay positive in this trade. So remember this, and I'm going to clear it. I'm going to go choose strategy at the same time. I'm going to do a call for the call side, and let's see what I can collect. I'm going to move my strikes in. Okay. Um, to around the 190 here we go like right around 70 percent probability right and I can also move this sucker out if you have enough capital look I can collect a dollar for three now so that more than makes up see so there's no stress I'm not gonna finish in the money I got a one more month and I still have a pretty good probability of success of um, of making money and that's how you manage your position so when stuff and what's the best part the best part is Look, look at the environment in which I'm doing it at. IV rank is 92.54%. So my odds of, of being right are even kicked higher because what are the chances of IV rank still being that high in November? November expiration. I'm expecting volatility collapse this way. When vol collapse, you can be wrong on the price and still make money. Okay, I hope that helps. You guys have a good one. If you have any questions, give me a shout out on the forum page. Um, at the bottom here in the shop box. Sorry, I minimized my screen a little bit so you can't really see too much. But uh, if that helps, 